King's family plans to celebrate the holiday with a march to keep pressure on the Senate to pass the For the People and the John Lewis Voting Rights Acts. But Martin Luther King Jr.'s son, Martin Luther King III, has stressed, quote, no celebration without legislation. President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris are facing pressure from other quarters to do more than offer forceful remarks on protecting the right to vote. On Tuesday, the president and vice president will visit Atlanta to talk about voting rights and efforts by Georgia Republicans to limit voting access in that state. But ahead of their arrival, a coalition of voting rights groups have released a statement essentially saying, don't come to Atlanta without a plan to pass voting laws. Quote, Georgia voters made history and made their voice voices heard, overcoming obstacles, threats, and suppressive laws to deliver the White House and the United States Senate. In return, a visit has been forced on them, requiring them to accept political platitudes and repetitious, bland promises. Such an empty gesture without concrete action, without signs of real tangible work, is unacceptable. As civil rights leaders and advocates, we reject any visit by President Biden that does not include an announcement of a finalized voting rights plan that will pass both chambers, not be stopped by the filibuster, and be signed into law. Anything less is insufficient and unwelcome. End quote. Joining us now, Nse Ufo, she's the chair of the CEO of the New Georgia Project, which is one of the groups that signed on to that letter. Uh, Nse, good to see you again. Thank you for being here tonight. That is a, a forceful letter. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious about what you think the reaction will be and what you'd like the president and the vice president to be able to do to meet the standards that are set out in that request. Well, um, I will say that some of the earlier reactions have been uh, quite uh, sort of visceral. I think that people think that we are being um, sort of harsh or sharp in our critique. But what our intent is and what I think is happening is that we are creating the demand. Right. So that there is no doubt that this his, on this historic visit where we have not only the president of the United States, but also our vice president coming to this historic place, uh, the cradle of the civil rights movement, of the American civil rights movement here, our great state of Georgia, to talk about how our democracy, how our elections infrastructure is being attacked, they should hear from activists and organizers and ordinary Georgians on the ground about what they would like to see from this visit. So again, some people might frame it as a harsh criticism. I absolutely see it as articulating the demand from their base. So now what happens when, when the president and the vice president say, as they have said, we're, we're on your side on this thing. We fully agree with you. There's no policy difference between what you and, and your fellow groups have done in Georgia and what you want done and when what the president wants done. But how, how do you propose or do you not propose uh, that, that he get to that uh, in terms of getting something that looks like a plan that can pass? When we say both houses of Congress, we, we, we really mean the Senate because we, we were able to pass it through the House uh, and, and overcome the filibuster. What is it you're asking specifically to be done? Well, here's the thing. So uh, Senator Schumer has already laid the plans, uh, has articulated his ambitions to have a rule change vote on the 17th, uh, commemorating the birth of Martin Luther King. Um, what I will say is, listen, I haven't served in that body for four decades, but I know someone who has, and that's our president of the United States. And so my, it is our hope that with his 40 years of experience with his Senate colleagues and the bully pulpit that comes with being the president of the United States, right? That together he can work with the leaders in the, in the Senate to articulate what the plan is, what a path forward is. Or if there is no plan, if Republicans have so thoroughly uh, abdicated their responsibility to govern, that there's no path forward, I think the American people need to hear that. I want to talk about some of the very specific things. To some people, this is an abstraction. If you have never stood in a line uh, to vote or you don't have problems registering to vote um, it, or your, your, your polling place is very close to you and you don't need transportation and you're able to take time off from work, this is an abstraction. Uh, in, in, in Georgia, um, advocates, I just want to read this to our viewers. Right now, advocates and local leaders are fighting to stop the closure of seven out of eight polling places in Lincoln County, where over one-third of the voters are black. Just next week, the state legislature will convene 
meeting with Republican leaders already proudly touting their plans to attack voting access, push to ban drop boxes, and erect new hurdles uh, in, uh, in, in the path of voters. This is very, very practical for you and, and your organization and for voters in, in Georgia. It is literal, physical impediments to people voting. Absolutely. Um, this is not an academic discussion, right? We are not sitting on our dorm room floor debating democracy. Uh, like what is happening? This is a, a an active threat in real time. Uh, our Republican leaders in Georgia and federally have not stuttered, not once. They are unified. This is a well-funded attack. And we are not just talking about Georgia. We're not just talking about red states. I will not shut up about the fact that 400 anti-voting bills were introduced in nearly every state in our country in the 10 months, um, in the 11 months uh, since uh, legislative sessions started again in 2021. They are not playing. Um, and I don't understand why people are not uh, acting with a sense of urgency. Uh, there are tons of things in the president's domestic policy agenda and in the foreign policy agenda that we absolutely need passed, right? The Build Back Better bill is brilliant. The changes to infrastructure, the expansion of the definition of infrastructure to include our frontline workers, our service workers, the human capital, the people that make our country continue to run and that have kept us safe. All of that is necessary. All of that is important. And none of that will happen if we are not able mm -hmm. to secure people's participation in our elections. And I'm talking about right. rural counties in Georgia, and we're talking about counties in California as well. You underscore the most important point here. Thanks again for being with us and for the work you do. And Sayu Fote is the CEO of the New Georgia Project. We appreciate you being with us tonight. <laughs>